almost like the flashpoint where it starts, one of the key matrix lines that will help shatter this status centralized system. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, June 13th, 2012, and this is Flashpoint Radio. Thank you for joining me. I am Jay Z, your host, as always. Tonight's episode is going to revolve around health and science. I'm thinking about uh, codifying my episodes into some topics of discussion. We'll see how that goes, but tonight we're going to focus solely on science and health-related stories. As always, links to these articles are in the description below. Please go read them yourself. I'm just one man, and my opinion is basically worthless. I want you to form your own opinions. And... uh, Use this as a jumping off point, if anything. But let's start this evening jumping across the pond to Great Britain, where we get so much of our news because at times it seems like they do a better job of reporting studies from the United States than we do. But this study comes to us from the United Nations and the article from The Guardian, Spread of Baby Boxes in Europe Alarms United Nations. You may say, what the heck is baby boxes? Well, baby boxes are hatches or boxes installed in hospitals and uh, religious monasteries or some sort of religious building where women who have unwanted children or who gave birth to unwanted babies can take their child, put them in these hatches, and know for certain that they will be taken care of. Uh, At least physically, right away they will be taken into the arms of someone who will care for them medically. Um, I personally think that's a great idea. Um... I'm against abortion. I always will be. So you should have some sort of option. This is a pretty good option. But the United Nations, those loving guys over at the United Nations, is increasingly concerned at the spread in Europe of baby boxes. The UN Committee on the Rights of the Child is who is upset. The UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, which reports on how well governments respect and protect children's human rights, is alarmed at the prevalence of the hatches, usually outside a hospital. The committee, a group of 18, a group of 18 international human rights experts, 18 people making a decision for the United Nations, they want this to be the global blueprint, says that while foundling wheels and baby hatches have disappeared from Europe, Almost 200 have been installed across the continent. And well, the pro-life lobby, those evil pro-lifers, state that these baby hatches are good and they will cut down on abortions and women will give birth to their children and loving parents can be connected to unwanted children. But the UN, as we know, is a big proponent on reproductive rights. Reproductive rights, other term for pushing abortions. And they would rather those... Um, 400 children, it's said, that were abandoned since 2000, they'd rather them be dead. I've looked at the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child's website. Yeah, they don't want you spanking your child. But a government official, if they deem it necessary, can spank your child. Read the article. Go to it. Find it yourself. These are eugenicists who don't like any way of assisting human life. They like death destruction. And if you give another option for abortion against abortion, then people may choose that option. And you can't have that. You can't have that because these are children, children of a lower level of life, children that are below these 18 international human rights experts. So, yeah. Moving right along, though, some things not aren't always bad coming from Europe and Great Britain. The Telegraph states, UK midwife, mothers-to-be enjoy pregnancy more with a single midwife. The Royal College of Obstetricians actually recommends women have home births. Uh, I personally would recommend, after witnessing a home birth, women have home births, people with uncomplicated pregnancies. This is a very good article um, stating that, at least in Great Britain, they are making some strides. The government is actually acknowledging What has always been known, that when there are no complications, a woman should be comfortable with uh, a single assistant, midwife, and it is a natural process that should be allowed to happen, not in a sterile environment with a doctor who comes in at the last 15 minutes to catch the baby and then sends you a bill for $10,000. 
that's not how it's supposed to be. Then the telegraph tells us this, which isn't as positive. Unborn babies could be tested for 3,500 genetic faults. Scientists could soon be able to routinely screen unborn babies for thousands of genetic conditions, raising concerns the breakthrough could lead to more abortions. You think? You think? What is this? Finding out if you find out if it's a boy or a girl, you know, what when does that start? The 40s, the 50s? Now you you wonder why now there are sex uh, uh, sex directed abortions. People don't want to have daughters, so they abort the fetus. Might not be happening as prevalent in America, but it's happening all over the world with that technology. Yes, this is going to lead to this. And it's funny, the Telegraph, a UK publication reporting on a study out of the United States. Are any of the other uh, mainstream United States publications going to put this together? No, they're not, because they know the backlash they would get if the American public saw this. The American public don't want to be poked and prodded and their blood taken. They mostly want to care for their child. They don't need to be prepared to love their child. And that's what this does. It prepares you to love or not love as much your child, in my opinion. That's what it does. But at least the Telegraph, at least some British publications, have the decency to put out an opposing viewpoint. What day? This first story came on June 6th. And they released this story on June 7th, the next day. Thank you, Telegraph. Genetic screening of unborn babies may be inaccurate. New tests for genetic screening of unborn babies will not be 100% accurate and may scare parents into believing their children will be born with a disability when they are healthy. Yes, of course it's inaccurate. Man is inaccurate. Therefore, science, the science that has the basis that there is no God, that science, the science that states there is no God and man is the highest being, that science is and always will be found to be inaccurate. Some in greater amounts than others, but it will. And if that's the case, why are you getting parents who should be worried about how much they're going to love their child, worried about what might be in their child or what their child might develop into and then have the option of taking care of it? or in, vitro, in utero surgery, which is dangerous for the woman and the child. Yes, at least the Telegraph shows that there are some opposing viewpoints. Our media would have put out the first thing about the 3,500 uh, genetic tests to be screened for, and then left it at that. But there are other opinions, and this one states that it's a bad idea, and that we shouldn't be pushing this technology. Not saying it shouldn't be there, but it shouldn't be pushed. And it's being pushed because they make a profit off of it. And from Boston.com, we're going to file this one in how convenient. Freezer failure at Brain Bank hampers autism research. A freezer malfunction at Harvard-affiliated McLean Hospital has severely damaged one-third of the world's largest collection of autism brain samples, potentially setting back research on the disorder by years. Yes, yes. So it could be slowed by as much as a decade. So right is a lot of people are doing good studies that are looking at other reasons for autism and not in a directed fashion, which their studies all are. Let's find a reason that is not vaccines and is not what the government is doing to you. Yeah, all those brains, they went bad because a, a refrigerator went down. Man, I'm so glad we're putting so much trust in these studies with people who, I don't know, can't keep their ice cream cold. I can't tell you the last time I had a refrigerator go down and I or a freezer go down and I didn't get to the product before it went bad, but government funded operations tend to do stupid things. Government funded studies tend to say a certain type of things and then private other fund other other funded studies come out and might have other opinions. Washington Times study suggests risk from same sex parenting. Two studies released on Sunday uh, claims that same-sex parents might not actually be as good of parents. They looked at a gold standard data set of nearly 3,000 randomly selected young adults, the most, uh, the largest set of, uh, of participants ever studied for a study of this kind, and they found, uh, Dr. Regeneris, Mark Regeneris, that lesbian mothers, adults raised by lesbian mothers, had negative outcomes in 24 of 40 categories, while those raised by gay fathers had negative outcomes in 19. It flies in the face 
of the APA, American Psychological Association report, that states that parents that are same-sex can and do raise just as good of children. Lauren Marks of LSU University looked at that study and said that's false, and that can't be that can't be a true statement resting on this. And I found, while doing some research on the APA, that the APA has come out and stated that there is no proof and there can be no statement made that you are born gay. So before you jump up in arms and say you're born that way, no. They state, the people who think gay parents are just as good as uh, not as hetero parents, they say you can't be born gay. Look it up. You can find it. Good article, just an opinion by these guys. And it's a scientific opinion and not my opinion. Then we have this from USA Today. How about a government study that you should throw away, ball up and throw away? Panel to postmenopausal women don't take vitamin D and calcium. So yes, do not take vitamin D. And they only used 800 milligrams, which I take, I believe, 8,000? 4,000? 8,000, my wife chimes in, uh, milligrams of vitamin D. And you should look at yourself, but don't ask your doctor who is funded by pharmaceutical companies and comes out of a school of uh, thought, a school of medical knowledge that only has one cure, and that is pharmaceutical. Uh, don't listen to them. Go to another reference point. Go to naturalnews.com. Find a naturopath, homeopath. Until you listen to... Don't. Sorry. Don't. Listen to the government for advice on your own body. So before you take the advice of the government, seek out every opinion you can think of. Even the crazy guy babbling on the side of the road is probably has better thoughts than the government. So when the government tells you to do something, turn around, and you might not have to run away immediately, but find some place to walk to and never look back because, well, we know what the government tends to do with things. Uh, the government let's, you know, refrigerators die and, and things get out. And they also do this. Again, USA Today, airflow, airflow problems plague CDC bioterror lab. A $214 million bioterror or terror lab in Atlanta has had repeated problems with airflow systems. And in February, the air system actually blew out from a potentially infected area with animals that were being tested on with biological weapons. Level three which is the third out of five of the deadliest weapon uh, uh, virus levels, and they were using monkeypox, dangerous strains of influenza, anthrax, SARS, yes. And their air conditioning system actually blew outward into an area where guests were. Guests. Uncovered, unprotected guests were at the CDC. Observers, visitors, and they blew potentially deadly and extremely contagious viruses into them. So the next time they say bath salts cause the cannibalism, bath salts cause someone to go crazy, you know what it could be now that you've watched Flashpoint Radio. Xanax mixed with bath salts, Xanax mixed with alcohol, Xanax mixed with anything, any other SSRIs or psychotropic drugs. Or maybe, maybe the CDC released a bioweapon accidentally. But they're going to tell you if they did, aren't they? I mean, right? We trust the government to tell us if they accidentally released a bioweapon. They wouldn't blame it on something else to save face, would they? Oh, yeah, they would. Why? Because you have the power. You are the sovereign. You pay their damn salaries. You're in control. You just have to stand up and assume that control. It starts local, and then it grows. Come back and see me again tomorrow. Thank you for joining me on Flashpoint Radio. Jay-Z signing off saying God bless and keep your eyes to the sky for the potential bioterror attack. Now,